Welcome, Climate Viewers. It's August 30th, 2017, and this is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at climateviewer.com and climateviewer.org. I got a quick update on Hurricane Harvey, some cloud seeding craziness, and the U.S. government electrified cloud seeding over Texas. This is insane. So follow along with me. All right, so just yesterday I did a video about all the floods, um, water is receding from... Hurricane Harvey and how that is affecting possibly the South Texas nuclear power plant. Um, we are, I did read some information about the Colorado River and Brazos um, just coming together. So um, please keep an eye on that. We still have purple levels all the way across Texas. Um, this water will be coming out. But I just want to get to the other thing because, wow. All right. So. Everybody on Facebook has been throwing this one at me. Um, apparently, there was a paper that got thrown around. So, Trans Pecos Weather Modification Association, Pecos Barstow, Texas, seeding report August 24th, 2017. And it says in this thing that basically they were cloud seeding during the hurricane. So, of course, everybody's up in arms about that. Um, and you know, I'm, I'm looking over here on Facebook and people are freaking, you know, out pretty heavily. So I wanted to look into it and really try to clear up some of the information on that. Um, because I too am very concerned about cloud seeding. So, um, let me get this up right here. I want to give credit where credit's due. There's this dude named Ryan DeCross. There we go. Bam. So Ryan, uh, post this photo. And you can see it's got 293 shares and the trolls be uh, in there too. There's me with my old video. Um, but anyway, so over here you see fired flares into clouds, 915 happened here, all in Texas, Texas, they got this thing underlined. So, you know, this got a whole lot of shares and a whole lot of attention. So I looked into it and of course we were, uh, who was it? Send it to me. Uh, oh my God, it's on my wall right here. Uno momento. So, of course, I posted this to my wall and Donna Couture, I believe her name, Donna McCouture. There you go. She uh, found the link, boom, and I backed it up on archive.org, and that's the rest of the story. So, then it gets a little crazier. I went and dug into their servers. Uh, shout out to Terry Lee Hydraj for showing me this. And, of course, we found this picture to go along with it. You click that, and here's what you get. So, I took that and I went over here and I did this and I put it into Google Earth and you can see here's where it happened. So what happened was they were cloud seeding in proximity to the hurricane. Um, that is true. So let me go over here. I'm trying to get the chat up. I didn't even bother to grab it. I just wanted to make this a very quick video. All right, there we go. <laughs> Congratulations on getting your notification dielectric. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So this thing did happen. It did happen right here. Okay. So this is on the west side of Texas. You can see right here, two flares burned here, four flares burned here. And here is the date, 2017-08-25. And I got this file from there. And this is, you know, where I tracked it down. And then I went and I lined it up with the actual counties. You can see that takes a little bit of jiggering, but I got it perfectly lined up. So that's where that happened. All right. So now the question is, does burning six flares here cause a big effect on the hurricane? Now that is something I cannot answer, but let's take a little look. I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to cut off uh, this rain thing because it's going to make me mad. Get away with the flood levels just real quick. Come on. All right. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to hit the corrected reflectance, modus terra, and we can see where this where the hurricane is today. And I want to make that a little bit see-through so we can see about where we're going. Okay. So right about here is where we're talking about. See over here, Odessa on this side of the state, pretty darn far away. There we go. Okay. So the question is, did on the 25th this affect anything? So we're going to go back to the 24th. Here's where we're talking about right about here. 
you can see there's a large patch of clouds in this area. 25th. They seem to have formed a thicker band here as the hurricane approaches. Looks like the clouds are pretty much in the same damn area and are getting affected by the overspray. 26. And of course, now all of that seeding material has been ingested into the outside wall. Now, I am not a geoengineer. I don't claim to be one and I don't ever want to be. But it does seem within reason that if you dump six seeds, even on this side of the state, that those clouds, because of the way the air was moving at the time, and I could go and break out a whole bunch of visual animations of water vapor and all that. We could do that. I don't want to get too deep in it. You guys go do that. There's plenty of you to make videos about that. But it does stand to reason that that cloud seeding material did end up in this hurricane. And how much that intensified it, I have no clue. Um, but it's probably not wise to modify a we the weather anywhere near a freaking hurricane. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it on that. But here's where it gets even more interesting. So in looking this thing up, I came across this. So not only did I find the paper, thank you to Donna, I was able to find the video of this conference that they just had. So here's the actual Texas licensing uh, TDLR having their weather modification advisory committee meeting where, you know, they have one of these every year. So um, I think I even have a playlist. Oh, yeah, we won't go there anyway. So links to the details right here. So this is the agenda for that meeting that came from that paper that everybody is sharing the hell out of Thursday, August 24th. We can see that that clearly does match up with what we got right here. August 24th. Um, bam. So here's the meeting details, phone numbers. You can call people. These guys seem to be very open to talking about their weather modification activities. And down here, I found something extremely freaking interesting. And maybe you will too, because this is more interesting than some flares that hit a hurricane. But my God, I've never heard this. So hold on to your pants, everybody. Presentation on the summer experiments to assess the efficacy of seeding with charged particles on convective tower cloud towers and i saw charged particles i said that sounds like electricity you mean electricity like this like i talked about world's first electric uh, electric cloud seeding drones in the uae um you mean like that kind of electricity you know um i'm kind of interested in that because that's a big thing and it's going around right now there you go there's the uae workshop on doing electrifying this the clouds over there references on uh, climatebeer.com so i'm familiar with the idea of you know electric cloud seeding and that this is a thing you know that that here's the article may 2017 world first electric cloud seeding via drones in uae i thought it was a world first maybe hell it probably isn't a world first because apparently the u.s department of agriculture is going to do electric cloud seeding over texas oh wait they already did so i was digging into this and you guys can follow along with the cliff notes as you can see i watched the whole damn video and i put some details on here like you can click at 245 130 legislative bills blah 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 Texas licensing, uh, total acreage of cloud seeding with a map. I love maps. Um, they said that they had 26 million acres of cloud seeding in Texas. Blah, blah, blah. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Clint, they refer to him as Clint Hoffman, U.S. Department of Agriculture, the Agriculture Research Service, ARS. And Craig Funky, he's from the Texas Weather Modification Association, inquires about an exemption status from licensing to do cloud seeding with electrified particles. So that's fascinating to say the least. Um, guess I won't play the audio for that because this could get very, very long if I try to bore you with that. Follow along with the details. Anyway, so I start looking this guy up and this is very fascinating. So here's what he says. I don't want to like change what he said. This is pretty crazy. At 27 minutes in, when they get to item G, it starts right here at 25 minutes in, 27 minutes in, um, Wesley Clint. This is serious, guys in chat. This is real. I just found this out today he says that they did four days of seeding in june of 2017 for 10.5 flight hours they dumped 1400 gallons of texas's finest tap water 
which was electrostatically sprayed above clouds. So what did they do? They took water, they put it into a spraying unit, they electrified the water, they sprayed it over the clouds, and as he put it, large drops of electrified water fell through the clouds and then went on to, quote, Produced 1,379 acre feet of water per cloud seeded versus 700 that they get from doing silver iodide. So this is the U.S. government, the U.S. Department of Agriculture. I am going to be up in that government ass figuring out what the hell is going on here because i was under the assumption that all the crazy people modifying the weather were just climate scientists climate engineers and you know cloud seeders i was not aware until today and now you are too that the u.s department of agriculture is actively modifying the weather itself and testing it over texas in June of this year, they did it, and they're going to continue to do it. Um, it gets even better. Board member, this is 33 minutes. How do you get the? Uh, how do you get an electrostatic charge in water? Hoffman, we use it in cotton, corn. We tested this spray system in wind tunnels with other materials other than water, and we expect those to do even better. Involves different different salts, like. Barium salts? God, I hope it isn't that. Let's just say it's silver salts. Let's say it's some other kind of salts. Got to be other salts than barium salts, right? Anyway, so I'm really freaking out about this at this point. You know, like this is all I've done today. It has ruined my day. I have not coded a damn thing because of this. So he says, we, you know, we use it on cotton and stuff, man. You know, and then he says at 34 minutes, we are in the same range of silver iodide flares, about 1 billion seeds per acre. So that's 1 billion drops of electrified water per acre. That's about the rate that they're spraying this stuff. See, all these details, I love them, man. It's interesting to me. I'm sure it's interesting to you and hell, everybody else will rip my material off tomorrow. Um, but at least we, the people who know where all of this freaking info comes from comes from me because i read the shit all right so this is where it gets even more interesting um let's see where was it oh he uh okay so let's get out of here so this is where it gets downright crazy so i had to look this guy up and i said to myself let me close some of this stuff out who is this clint hoffman well it turns out here's his name wesley c hoffman clint Aerial Application Technology Research, Agriculture Engineering, Clint Hoffman at ars.usda.gov. I suggest everybody talk to him. I'm going to call him as soon as I get off the phone, off this thing. Um, I wonder if he'll take my phone call. <laughs> anyway, um, he's in College Station, Texas. I've got the building that he's working in and stuff like that. You guys can get in touch with him. But what's interesting about this? Aerial Application Technology for Sustainable Crop Production. Wait a minute. I saw that scary word, sustainable. Red alert, red alert, red alert. The sustainable word has been used. So I'm looking down and then I see deployed warfighter protection research program for 2016 and 2017. And what I realized was that in this one right here, he goes on to say that, you know, well, I'm actually, you know, designing uh, electro sprayed chemicals shout out to pete ramon electrostatically sprayed electro sprayed my boy pete ramon has been talking about that for years he says a a t right here a a t r u i haven't even looked it up yet because i just want to be the first to get this out there so you guys can go ahead and get digging in AATRU scientists have begun working with a private company to develop an electrostatic spraying system that can be used with oil-based sprays such as ULV, uh, ULV Melathion, Metafluthrin, and Ecentria IC3, etc. 
the ES system will be the electrostatic spraying, electro spraying um, system will be rugged, compact, inexpensive, and very low power requirements. The first system will be able to safely charge the spray using four AA batteries to generate a four kilovolt. I think that's KV little K kilovolt charge at a low, uh, very low amperage with minimal shock of hazard. So this guy's making a electro spray system to kill bugs around troops. Interesting. So what are we really talking about here? We're talking about Philip or uh, Wesley Hoffman has converted a insecticide sprayer. Um, <laughs> you know, I don't know if you've ever, you guys have ever seen these things. Um, but basically they look like this, uh, you know, that's an electro sprayer. So Wesley Hoffman is actually talking about detail right there. Good pixel productions, my homeboy. Um, he's talking about using a pesticide sprayer to electrify water to do some cloud seeding. Does it creep you out that the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Agricultural Research Program is modifying the weather over Texas with the same system that they used to spray mosquitoes? <laughs> I mean, that just super creeps me out. I don't know about you, but that's what these things look like. Um, it, it's pr pretty darn right creepy. Pretty darn right creepy. So that's that's a new one on me. I'm going to look into this some more. Um, I hope you guys will as well. But I did not know that the U.S. Department of Agriculture <laughs> was that into modifying the weather. So you learn something new every day. Um, this was fascinating for me. Details will be in the description. Uh, this is a day right here, August 24th, 2017. And that's the first I heard it. So I know it's the first you heard it. And I hope you spread the word. Um, very interesting stuff. This uh, Clint Hoffman is going to probably get a couple phone calls because of this. And I will probably be one of them. But when you look down through his stuff, you're going to see a whole lot of aerial released spray penetration of tall coniferous canopy. You know what that means. He also made an app, um, interestingly enough converting aerial imagery to application maps. Um, apparently, he's a fellow mapper. So we'll talk about that in the future. But um, that is a fascinating story. So please, you know, share this around. Tell these, you know, come over here, watch this video. You know, get get down with the sickness. Um, Mr. Hoffman is uh, obviously trying some new technology. I was unaware that... The U.S. government was involved. I was unaware they were doing it in Texas. The fact that they're getting an exemption from even being licensed is always wary to me. The last time this happened was David Kaczynski with the Oceanic Atmospheric River thing. And I told you in that the la about that in the last video. So, guys, you know, please also check out my last video, Hurricane Harvey Mapped, Geoengineering and Radioactive Floodwaters, for all the rest of the details on that. Um Wow, too much to do, too little time. Um, but I definitely wanted to be able to get that in there. I, I need to get my butt back to coding, but prayers for the people of Texas. Um, been there, done that. It is a long haul. I went through Hugo. I went through the 1,000-year flood just this past October. Um, <laughs> guys, keep, you know, keep, them out, keep them safe out there and uh, put, keep them in your prayers. Wow, U.S. Department of Agriculture. The freaking government is spraying electrified water over Texas. I mean, that's a new one on me. I know it's a new one on you. <laughs> um, so, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. Please continue to support my work at climateviewer.com, climateviewer.org. Please support me by donating at paypal.me slash climateviewer and gofundme.com slash climateviewer. Um, and of course, you know, keep these links coming, guys. I wouldn't have known about any of this if you hadn't shared it with me. And I'm always glad to return the favor by saying where I got the stuff from and give you the context, history, and explanation you can't get anywhere else because I remember everything I read. So 
See you guys next time. Love you, mean it. Bye.